If you've tried scattering small objects on a surface that uses displacement, you'll have encountered a problem. Forest Pack calculates its position information according to the surface's state before render time. But that's a problem with displacement because it's not calculated until render time. The resultant changes in the surface at render time can result in the terrain disconnecting from the scatter geometry, and it's especially noticeable with very small objects like ground cover and leaves. To illustrate, let's take a look at a small, real-world scene created using several of Quixel's Megascan's assets. Here's the render of the landscape without the small plants and leaves, but with the displacement enabled using a V-Ray Displace Mod modifier. So let's imagine this is looking good, and we want to add our small plants and leaves to the scene. We're not going to go through the creation of these in detail for this tutorial, they're simply applied to the surface in the usual way. In the viewport, you can see that the scattered objects are sitting nicely on the ground surface, as you'd expect. But here's what happens when we render. Because the terrain has been displaced up to a maximum of 10cm above its original position, the bottom of the grasses and the clover are being buried, and the leaves have been completely covered. So how do you fix this? So one way is to forget the V-Ray displacement modifier, and instead heavily subdivide the model and use Max's displacement modifier to deform the geometry before render time. But realistically, it's seldom going to be possible to get the necessary detail using this technique. Instead, we can use a nifty forest effect to translate the scattered geometry in the viewport to match how the ground will appear after displacement. To use it, it's easy. Just simply create your forest pack object and scatter on the displaced surface in the normal way. But then, go to the effects rollout. Click on the plus button to add a new effect. Click on the Effects Library button. A window will open containing all of the effects included with Forest Pack, along with a brief description of what they do and how to use them. Locate the effect called Follow Displaced Surface Controller. It's in the Displaced Surfaces group. Select it and click Load. A number of options will be added to the parameters list. For most uses, you only really need to worry about the first few. Displacement Map, Displacement Amount, and Displace Shift. Add the Displacement Map that's applied to the surface to the Effects Displacement Map parameter. And then to control the amount of displacement, we link the forest object directly to the V-Ray Displacement modifier. That way, if you update the modifier, Forest Pack will be updated automatically as well. So to do this, click on the Displacement Amount parameter and then click Pick Controller. From the track selector, find the terrain object and locate the amount parameter of the V-Ray displacement modifier. Select it and then click OK. If you're using it, you can do the same thing for the shift value or enter the numbers manually depending on which version of the macro you have installed. But in this scene, I'm not using shift, so I'll just leave this parameter alone. And that's all there is to it. If you toggle the effect on and off, you'll see the position of the scattered items translating to take into consideration the surface's displacement. Because of the live link, you can also change the displacement modifier's amount and Forest Pack updates live. Finally, we don't really need them for this project, but it is also possible to use the altitude information from the displacement map to scale items using the altitude min, altitude max and scale curve parameters the same way as you would use the equivalent parameters in the surface rollout. We hope you found this quick tip useful and stay tuned for more videos to help you get the most from Forest Pack's effects and Rail Clones macros.